Hello, and welcome to Cultivate to Thrive podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Gunn. My mission is to help women find and live their purpose, resulting in discovering who they innately are. Throughout this podcast journey, I will help you to uncover your talents and your strengths to lead you on the path of realizing value in self, to grow in love of self, to lead to a fulfilling purpose, and to build stronger relationships. In this episode, I will talk about leadership. A definition of leadership is the action of leading a group of people or an organization. One definition that I came across that I truly like is, Leadership is essentially a continuous process of influencing behavior. To really talk about leadership, we must have a good understanding of what a leader is. After all, we see the word leader being tossed around a lot, especially in social media. A November 2016 article on Forbes.com posed the question, what is the definition of a good leader? The answer was, A great leader possesses a clear vision, is courageous, has integrity, honesty, humility, and clear focus. Great leaders help people reach their goals, are not afraid to hire people that might be better than themselves, and take pride in the accomplishments of those they help along the way. I can work with this. Can you see a difference between a manager or supervisor and a leader? Let's talk about it. The definition of a manager is a person responsible for controlling or administering all or part of a company or similar organization. The word that stands out to me in this definition is controlling. I tend to think of a micromanager, someone who dictates and watches over everything you do. They are often afraid to allow you to be successful and will seldom give credit where credit is due. The definition of a supervisor is a person who directs the execution of a task or an activity. This sounds a lot like a babysitter to me. They are there just to see that things get done. When we examine the definition of a leader again that was provided on Forbes.com, a great leader possesses a clear vision, is courageous, has integrity, honesty, humility, and clear focus. Great leaders help people reach their goals, are not afraid to hire people that might be better than themselves, and take pride in the accomplishments of those they help along the way. Characteristics that immediately stand out to me are, of course, possesses a clear vision, is courageous, has integrity, honesty, humility, and a clear focus. These build trust. Trust is an important part of the foundation of any relationship. Remember that, they also said in this article, great leaders help people reach their goals, are not afraid to hire people that might be better than themselves, and take pride in the accomplishments of those they help along the way. Whoa, what? There are people who want you to succeed? They're not afraid if you do better than they do? Why, yes, there are. Great leaders are not afraid and don't hesitate to do what they ask of you. Great leaders know that their success lies in your success. Not only are they continuously working on self-development, but they will also encourage people they are leading to continuously develop themselves. They will have an interest in both teamwork and team development. I've worked for many different people. Some were managers, some were supervisors, but few were true leaders. Many times, it's easy to tell by the turnover of employees or the lack of the ability to fill positions and keep them filled, that there is no leader to be found, only managers or supervisors, regardless of the titles they hold. Think of the difference a leader can make, growing and developing people to be their best. When employees or volunteers, because this does apply there as well, 
are being served with encouragement, honesty, integrity, clear communication, and a sense of being valued, they give more. And it's not just clear communication. I want to emphasize that continuous communication, keeping people in the know is important. Just think about it. Think about people you've worked for. Have you felt valued? Have you felt like you were part of a team? This makes a huge difference in feeling fulfilled and no matter what you do. While in college, I worked for a fast food company. The store manager always created opportunities for the employees to develop their skills and receive rewards. He treated people with respect and was always available to talk about what the future could hold. He was promoted. His replacement ensured that everyone that he would work with, he would not work with them. You could only accomplish what he permitted you to accomplish. And if you did not fall into his line, you would be punished. He did not want anyone to succeed more than he did. Under the first store manager, I felt valued. I trusted him, and I was even considering a career with that company. I gave my all even while I attended college. Under the replacement manager, I laughed. That's right, I moved on. I knew I valued myself more than he valued me. I knew there was no longer a future for me there. This was truly my first experience of what leadership was and what it was not. It molded me. I chose it to mold me for the positive. I know what I don't want to be. Now, know that not everyone is made to be a leader in the sense that you will lead a group of people or an organization, and that's okay. No matter what side of leadership you fall on, it is important to treat people with dignity and respect. I challenge you to consider where you have experienced true leaders in your life. Contemplate what leadership qualities you have and what qualities you would like to develop. As always, if you would like any help in personal or professional leadership development, please reach out today. Thank you for joining me for today's episode of Cultivate to Thrive podcast. Please remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and share with someone who needs to hear today's message. This podcast is brought to you by Cultivate and Thrive, coaching by Michelle. Have a blessed and purposeful week.